Hey everybody, thanks for swinging by. I sure do appreciate it. If this is your first time with the channel, my name is Mark. Oh, hi Mark. Welcome to Fit and Fire. Let's get into this video. This time we're gonna be talking about the Palmetto State Armory Rock, which is their 5.7 by 28 millimeter pistol that is going to be very similar to the FN 5.7 or the Ruger 5.7. And I can tell you that this is actually something that really interests me because I have been interested in the 5.7 cartridge for a very long time and only have a couple dozen rounds put through uh, a few different types of pistols through some of the um, range day events and stuff like that that I've been through. Now I actually own one of these and I'm really, really excited to uh, get some paces through not only the rock but also maybe some of the other offerings out there as well. Before we get into that, I just want to take a second to thank you guys for swinging on by. I really do appreciate it. If you haven't already been with the channel, I would ask for you guys to consider subscribing. It doesn't really cost you anything. I do know that you have to uh, go ahead and sign up for YouTube. And if that's not your thing, I understand. But uh, if you wouldn't mind going ahead and subscribing to the channel, if you do have a login, that would be great. Not only giving me a like but also commenting down the low down below what is your opinion of the 57 cartridge is it something that uh was never should have been a thing or something that uh needs a little bit more investigation some more um r d put into it maybe some new firearms so on and so forth let me know all of your thoughts on that down in the comment section down below for those of you who are new to the channel, I always like to try to explain to you my relationship with Palmetto State Armory. First and foremost, I'm an affiliate with them, so if you were to sign up for the Fit and Fire newsletter, shameless plug there, go to the fitandfire.com, sign up for the newsletter. I have a lot of great deals to include 5.7 ammunition as well. But if you were to click on one of the links and it goes to Palmetto State Armory, if you purchase something from them, I get a small kickback. The second thing is PSA did send this to me for review and 300 rounds of ammunition, and I really do thank them for doing that. However, I'm under no obligation to say anything good, bad, or indifferent. And as you guys may know, I like to do the good with the bad, so we're gonna be talking about the things that I really do like about this pistol, some things that I'd like to see improved as well. So let's talk about it. Let's do a quick flyover of this pistol. It is very similar to the PSA Dagger as far as the design of it. Um, the grip texture on this is exactly the same as the PSA Dagger, which is going to be very similar to the P365 or the P320 style of texture. Uh, has a kind of sandpaper feel, but not as aggressive as something like the M&P 2.0. So that's something I really do like. They've also put some texturing here on the frame, so for your non-dominant, uh, non-shooting hand, you can get in and grip on that frame and really help mitigate that recoil with this pistol. However, the 5.7 is a very soft shooting, very light recoiling uh, pistol, so uh, you really don't need it, but it's there for not only your ability to have a memory bump for your non-firing thumb, but also when you're not shooting, a nice spot for you to put your um, trigger finger as well. This particular one has a threaded barrel, so if you want to suppress it, you can do that. Um, has some really nice front and rear slide serrations. The manual of arms is going to be very similar to that of a Glock pistol. Uh, the Recoil spring on this is actually really, really interesting. It's really easy to manipulate this slide. It's almost, it's almost like messing with a Smith & Wesson 380EZ or their 9EZ. Most anybody can manipulate this slide uh, with minimal ease. And that's something I really, really do like about it. Another great thing um, is that they do offer optics ready versions as well. As you can see, I have the primary arms classic mini red dot already mounted on here. And while uh, it does sit a little high, uh, the stock sights are not going to be able to co-witness. Obviously you can see that. But the great thing about these iron sights is the fact that these are 
Glock compatible sights. So if you don't like these particular sights, because these are three dot sights that come from PSA, and while they are steel, not my favorite, I don't like three dot sights, uh, you can easily switch these out with any aftermarket Glock sights. And that's something I really, really do like. So good on PSA for doing that. Another interesting piece about this pistol is that this is a striker fired pistol. And a lot of you might be like, well, yeah, duh, Mark, it is. But the FN57 and the Ruger 57 are an integral, or excuse me, an internal hammer fired pistol. So that is a, a nice little change. And the reason why I like that a little bit better is because it really helps this trigger. This trigger here, man, let me tell you, <laughs> that's what makes this pistol a lot of fun to shoot. So here you go, you're gonna have your standard take up with a polymer frame striker fire pistol. And so you got your take up there and your brake right there. It's like one millimeter. It's super short and pretty light. It's sitting right around that four and a half, five pound mark, I think. Here's your reset right there. Super, super short. And then your second pull there, man, I, I can tell you, that's what makes this pistol so much fun to shoot is the ability to actuate that trigger so quickly and so easily. In addition to that, like I mentioned, this is super light recoiling and super flat shooting. So putting multiple rounds on target, one right after another, it's too easy. So that is what makes this thing so much fun. Plus, it's going to come with 23 round magazines, uh, which makes going through a box of 50 rounds super, super easy. So there is a really quick flyover of the pistol itself. Let's talk about the shooting experience. Uh, I have said several times already, had a blast with this. This is a lot of fun to shoot. Now, a lot of people might think, well, you know, the 5.7 cartridge really doesn't have a place anywhere because it's not a pistol cartridge and it's not a rifle cartridge. It's right in between there. So it's probably a little bit too much for personal defense and a little too less for, um, you know, an intermediate, intermediate cartridge um, to use for, you know, hunting or something like that. So I do understand what they're getting at there. But one of the things that I really think that this fits a niche for is training and that may sound really really weird but let's all face it taking someone new or inexperienced to the range uh, can be somewhat frustrating especially if you're trying to use like a nine millimeter pistol to train that individual how to shoot it might just be too hard recoiling for them it might scare them because it's so loud so a lot of people will use 22 long rifle because it's cheap uh, the pistols are light recoiling and inexpensive as well. And you could take a, a brick of 500 rounds and spend all day out at the range and only spend, you know, what, 40, 50 bucks on uh, ammunition. So with that being said, uh, this might be an option, not the perfect option, but an option for taking someone from 22 long rifle and graduating them up to something a little bit more powerful. Something that is a little louder when you shoot it, that may recoil a little bit more, but is not as hard recoiling as a nine millimeter pistol would be for a young, new, or inexperienced shooter. So that is one of the areas that I think that this might excel in for a lot of individuals who may be firearms instructors or you know just wanna take uh, someone new out to the range for the first time, this actually may be an option for that. In addition to that, one of the other niches, like I've already mentioned before, is the fact that you could pick up a PCC or a subgun in 5.7, like the P90 or now the Ruger's new carbine that they have, uh, their PCC 5.7 or whatever they call it, their 5.7 carbine, I guess. kel has got their little space gun as well. So you can have a PCC or a sub gun set up and have a uh, pistol chambered in 5.7 on your hip as well. So that is something that I really do think uh, fits this cartridge and these pistols very, very well. All right, so let's talk about some of the some of the things that happened with this that uh, you guys need to know about. Um, not necessarily concerns or anything like that, but just some things that I uh, observed that uh, 
you should probably consider before buying this pistol. Uh, realistically, the MSRP on this is going to be somewhere around that $550 mark with the um, optics ready version without a threaded barrel. Uh, threaded barrel is probably going to add another $100 to it, but uh, you're sitting right around that $550, $600 range, which is a lot cheaper than the Ruger 5.7. So that's an added bonus. However, because of the cartridge, the magazine is going to be a lot longer. So here is a Glock magazine. Side by side, you can see how much shorter the Glock mag is compared to the 5.7. Because of that, that's going to make this pistol grip a lot larger. Now, normally I like a smaller pistol grip. Uh, that's just how I like to do things. This larger pistol grip actually fit my hand a little bit better, surprisingly. So I didn't have really necessarily any complaints about that, but individuals that have medium-sized hands or smaller, they may find this pistol grip to be a little bit too much. So there's that aspect of it. I did have two failures to eject, and I'm not 100% sure if that was the pistol's issue or if that was the ammunition issue. I was using FN 27 grain, 5.7 ammunition, and uh, like I said, I had two uh, rounds that did not eject. Uh, one of them didn't even have enough oomph to uh, actuate the slide to eject that round. The other one kind of uh, slowly moved that slide back and just kind of stopped. I'm going to say that's an ammunition issue and not the pistol because I was able to run the rest of the magazine no problem. So, um, but I wanted to make sure you guys knew that as well. About the only other thing that I would say about this pistol is concealed carry might be a little difficult for a lot of people because this is going to be a five inch barrel or just about a five inch barrel. I think this one is 4.8 inches. And uh, so carrying this pistol may not necessarily be an option, but if you are someone that lives out in the country or something like that and you need something that's going to dispatch uh, rabbits or something like that. This might be an option. Uh, something you want to use more than 22 long rifle. Uh, this might be good for rabbits, coyotes, stuff like that. So that's kind of a good application for this pistol as well. Outside of that, this has been a lot of fun to shoot. I, I'm going to keep it in my collection for sure um, because I'd like to see if I can maybe look at some of the other 5.7 pistols that are uh, available. I do have a friend that has an FN 5.7 so we can kind of do a comparison video on that and you know uh, put some more rounds through it. The only other downside to this is that ammunition is a little expensive. You're looking you, normally about a dollar a round for 5.7 by 28 millimeter. However, if you are signed up for the Fit and Fire newsletter, shameless plug right there, like I said before, I have had deals where you can find ammunition at about 75 cents per round. So uh, definitely check in on that. Um, you can sign up through fitandfire.com and help you guys save some money. But uh, I really like this pistol. Um, it, it is flat recoiling. The slide and bore axis on this is going to be really, really shallow. Um, and it, it's, just, it's just a lot of fun. But I want to hear what you guys have to say. Sound off in the comment section down below. Would you purchase a 5.7 pistol, regardless if that's FN, Ruger, or um, PSA? Sound off in the comment section down below. I would love to hear what you guys have to say. With that, that's pretty much going to be the end of this first looks video for the PSA Rock. I am going to continue to do more um, testing on this, take it out to the range, get some more rounds through it. Try to get a thousand round review done for you guys and uh, we'll report in back with you and do a comparison with the FN and Ruger as well. Let me know what you guys think on all of that. Sound off in the comment section down below. I really do appreciate you guys swinging by. As always, freedom through strength. Here comes a high five. We'll catch you guys later. Bye, y'all.